In common sense, this technique is called sync, where you have one oscillator synchronize or reset its waveform depending on what another oscillator is doing. In this case, I've changed my oscilloscope, my Mordax data, to be synchronized itself to the oscillator in my Moog Mother 32. The triangle is coming from the Dixie right now. I simplified the patch from the end of the last movie to get down just to one waveform again. And I'm using the triangle since the Dixie is a triangle core oscillator. This is its base waveform, so let's see how that's reacting. I'm going to take the pulse wave out of my other oscillator, my Moog Mother 32. It's the blue waveform. And I'm going to use that to synchronize the Dixie. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my red cables, which are normally for gates and triggers, just to show you sync is all about re-triggering the waveform. So as I plug into sync, you notice that the two oscillators have locked in together. And whenever there's a rising edge of the square wave, the triangle wave from the Dixie will reset. Now I have them set to pretty similar octaves here, so you're not going to see much of a difference. Here's the triangle by itself, octave lower. What's interesting is when I start tuning the Dixie up to higher pitches, you'll see it attempt to keep redrawing its triangle waveform, but then it'll reset as soon as it gets to another rising edge of that square wave. Let's go ahead and change this fine tune. You see a little bit up here there, and I'll open up the filter cutoffs and hear what's going on harmonically. Now that I'm tuned up a fifth, I'm almost fitting one and a half triangle waves into one width of my synchronizing oscillator square wave. You can put it up to octaves and start getting more extreme sounds. And you see how the harmonics are changing too. For example, here the second harmonics are very prominent because the Dixie is tuned up an octave. So it does have a component that's an octave higher than what's resetting it. But then those other high harmonics are changed depending on the relationship between these waveforms. I keep going higher in pitch. Now through all this, the main oscillator, the master that's synchronizing this Dixie, is indeed keeping its same pitch. There's the main oscillator out of the Moog. So when you combine them, it sounds like the Dixie's not changing pitch, but just changing timbre or harmonic content compared to this main oscillator. As you can hear, interesting things happen when I sweep the frequency of the slave oscillator compared to the master. We can do that automatically by using an envelope. So I'm going to grab another gate output from our keyboard, trigger our extra envelope with that, take the output of that, and I can run it into either of these frequency modulation inputs. The difference on the Dixie is one does not have an attenuator, it's always full strength, and one does have a nice little trim pot in addition to the ability to change it between linear and exponential FM. Does it change by a certain number of hertz for every volt of modulation it gets in, or does it change by a certain number of octaves for every volt that it gets in? Let's plug that in and start playing around with, well, let's just set up a simple one note sequence here. I'll go ahead and just put it down to one octave so it's clear what's going on. Slow it down. Then I'll start bringing up the amount of modulation from this envelope. If you want, you can lower the tuning on the Dixie, the slave oscillator. Change the speed of the decay. A little bit of attack time to get a swoop or a swoon to that sound.
Now, an important thing about sync is it only works if the slave oscillator is tuned higher than your master oscillator. Otherwise, it's going to reset the waveform before it's done. And just to get a modified triangle, it's not as interesting as having it higher in pitch. Take the arpeggiator off. That's quite a bright, ripping sound for just a triangle wave, which is normally a fairly sedate waveform without a lot of harmonics. Of course, you can add in some filter, or resonance, and then mix in the original oscillator. Now, the Dixie has this alternate sync mode called Flip, so that rather than resetting the waveform to start all over again when it gets a new rising pulse, instead, it reverses this direction. Let's move over to the flip side, and you'll see now the triangle is reversing and going back to an opposite peak. Let's do that change while we've got the filter open, resonance down, just the Dixie, so you can hear the differences in sound. Here's the sustained tone with sync. Here's the same tone with flip. There's a longer period to the waveform because it's going forwards then backwards as opposed to going forward and then resetting. Sync. Flip. So a very different tone. And of course, that can change depending on what waveform I'm using. For example, if I took the sawtooth out from the Dixie, quite a bright sound compared to the sync, which has a higher pitch to it compared to flip, which is reversing the waveform, therefore creating an extra, basically, sub-octave. There's the original mixed in. 